Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you, Sarah. Um, so when Sarah asked us to come, I was kind of taken aback. Why? Why are we going to tow and talk to people? Uh, we haven't done anything phenomenal. Um, but uh, over the last few weeks as we've been working on this, I think what it's come down to is we set big goals. We work really freaking hard to reach them. And we stay a good person while doing that. Um, and, and trying to translate that to you guys and what you're doing every day, day in and day out, is our goal here today. Um, and what Mike spoke about quite a bit um, is several of the topics that we're gonna talk about. And sometimes it's fun to just not hear it from mom or dad, right? Um, sometimes <laughs> it's, it's good to hear it from somebody else. Um, and as much as Sarah says we've achieved, and we're not cool, I promise you that, um, we're really boring, um, we have failed. We have failed over and over and over again, um, but we don't give up. Um, and so I think that's, that's something that our, hopefully our story will show and hopefully we'll give you guys some tools um, to help you. Um, it, it's really, it is. I see all your little signs here and, and I'm just in like happy mindset heaven. Um, <laughs> we teach this to kids a lot, so teaching to adults is a little bit different, um, but we really live by this um, day in, day out, the easy stuff, the hard stuff. Um, and so we would love to share it with you and if it helps any of you for any moment in time, in any aspect of life, not just business, not just sales, uh, then we have achieved our goal. Yeah. Um, so we are going to hand out these flyers, and we ask you to you have a pen, genuinely fill it out um, and be honest with yourself. So we talk about this concept in one life and how we have to do our best in all aspects of that one life. That took all of them. That take too many. If you have leftovers, yeah. let's just keep them going down the face. So. So guys, I want you to take your time a little bit with it. Don't think of it in a couple ways. We want to think of it how we rate ourselves, but in a fair manner, right? Um, we also want to think about how our spouse might rate us because maybe we're like, yeah, I eat great, you know? Um, and your wife's like, yeah, but every time you walk in the kitchen, you grab an Oreo, right? So let's kind of balance out what, what the truth is, if you can. So, oh, oh Right, to, right, right. to go through. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, look, look, average sucks. <laughs> we don't do average. I love that. Yeah, no, we don't do average. Yeah, so healthy eating and nutrition, right? Are you fueling your body? And I know you guys are on the road a lot, which that makes it a challenge, right? Um, but you can prep for that. You can prepare for that and set yourself up for success. I am a lunchbox fanatic. I will give you all the tips and tricks. Um, but, Meal prep on Sundays. You know, it's something that you prep can do. Before. It's just a habit creating kind of thing. Um, daily fitness and health. Um, are you taking care of yourself, right? Uh, the work that you guys do, you know, just from a homeowner's perspective, if someone's coming in to try and, you know, sell me something, I want that person to look like they take care of themselves too, because then I'm like, they're gonna take care of my home, they're gonna take care of this product as well, okay? So appearances do matter in a lot of what we're doing. Um, in business success, right? In order to grade yourself, you have to, what's your goal? What is success to you? If you don't know what success is to you, how do you rate yourself? Um, so you have to have that in your head or on paper, ideally, to know what success is, to know how you're doing. Um, financial stability, everyone can have a different rate for that, right? But again, put something on paper, write it down. Uh, we find that even as driven and focused as we are, if we don't have written goals, um, we're kind of all over the place. So write it down, do this with someone who will hold you accountable, do this with someone who you're trying to better yourself with, um, and usually those powers combined lead to a little bit faster success. Um, mental health and self-care, everyone has a different approach to that. Ours, 
uh, tends to be fitness, which fits in there, which that's something we'll talk about in a minute and combining some of these. Because you look at all these items and you're like, how am I supposed to be an eight or a 10 on all of these? There's not enough time in the day. And, and we get that, but when you combine them, um, it's a little, a little trick. Um, so do you have something that you enjoy doing? Do you prioritize going and doing that? Um, relationship with significant other. Um, we talk a lot about, do you know their love language? Um, do you set aside time to be with them without distractions, you know, without phones, without kids? Um, um, making sure that each other feels prioritized. Um, kids? Who has kids? Most of you guys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so we have to like to, to ask our kids, like, hey, how are you feeling about our level of interaction with you, our time with you? Because we can think it's one way and they have a completely different interpretation of it. They're usually brutally honest. Yeah, they'll, so tell they'll, they'll tell you. They'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're good if you need your ego knocked out a little bit. Um, relationship with friends, you know, as we get older, um, like Sarah said, there's, there's a few people, they're like, yes, I want to spend time with you. But that's valuable time, right? So um, if you're a super social person that fills your social battery, that's something you need to prioritize. Um, hobbies, anyone have really cool out there, outrageous Colorado how hobbies? Nobody's rock climber or skydiver or what's that window? Fourteeners. Oh, and time management. Time management um, is a skill, right? That we're all probably working on every day, um, and that's that's where like this what we call this life hack comes into play. So if you look at all these categories, um, like we said, it's it's hard to do really well in all of them. But I can tell you from, from just my experience share, I combine daily fitness and health, mental health, self-care, hobbies and training and friends, that's one hour of my day. That's my one hour of training a day and I get all four of those things done. And so they're all taken care of, uh, usually at 6 a.m. because if I don't, then the rest of the day, I'm not my best self and I know it's hard to squeeze it in after that. So. Um, this is not anything that we're going to super focus on, but we just wanted you guys to kind of see where you're at in these areas and, and see and think about um, and ideally share with someone so, next to you. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so we're going to get you out of your comfort zone. You're going to yeah. share with somebody nearby you. Um, your highest, what's your high your score, lowest. what's your low score, and how maybe you can improve any of those little elements. So take just a minute or two to kind of <laughs> talk to somebody about where you're failing. <laughs>
So guys, we need to make sure, you know, when you're looking at these things, we tend to over-prioritize one sometimes, and, and as adults, it often is work, it's our business, it's our, right, and we're just as guilty of that, so that's why she's saying, you know, trying to category, uh, put, put multiple things into a category if you can, right? Find a hobby that's productive for you, that also takes care of your fitness and your health would be great. Then you start caring more about your nutrition, um, becomes these little atomic habits, right? We have to make sure we're setting up our environment for success because if we're around, you know, we are the product of the five people we spend the most time with, right? So if we're around, and it sounds like you guys are around awesome people, right? But you guys are also in your cars and alone a lot probably, right? So we need to make sure we're very picky about who we spend our time with, right? Um, and not letting them become toxic in our, in our mind because what comes in comes out, right? Um, so like she said, we have one life. So we need to try and wrap all these things up. And if you did find that you're kind of low scoring yourself in one category or another, um, you know, we wanna try our best to, what little habits can I implement now that are gonna be not, you know, uh, that are gonna actually work for you, right? So if it, eating nutrition is, is one of your bad things, right? You're like, well, I just can't stop eating sugar. Well then stop buying sugar. <laughs> right so if it's in your house and every time you walk in the kitchen you're like ah but it's just one you know just stop buying it so it's not there for you and then you have to find an alternative right and have that one hour of discipline when you're grocery shopping or what we do is we we do that a lot so show online shop and then just have to pick up the bags and we don't even go in the store many times right or you find yourself just walk around the outside because everything in the center is usually not good for you mm -hmm. right so those little kind of things just setting your your habits in place for success for yourself, right? All right, let's move on to the next little thing. So hopefully you guys weren't too hard on yourselves on that one, um, but this brings us to this next part, right? Um, uh, yeah, so Mike, you spoke about this in other words, but this this concept um, is my favorite. <laughs> um, and it, any other type A? Not one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this actually has helped a lot um, in being a leader of a large group of people, um, and in my own life, um, understanding that in any situation when you take extreme ownership, it gives you your power back. Um, and us type Bayers really like uh, power, and we like control. Um, but what this also does is, is it opens your mind to a different way of looking at things, mistakes and success as well. Um, so uh, this quote, this first quote that you're gonna read, it's, it's a little harsh, right? Wherever you are in life, it's your fault. It stings a little, but I like to take the negative connotation of fault away and, and just think of it as, oh, these, these are my outcomes, this is my responsibility. Um, and that kind of mitigates that feeling of, well, I didn't choose that as a child. I didn't choose to be born to those parents or raised in this situation. Um, but our choices thereafter um, do impact that. And, and how we approach anything is how we approach everything. And so when you approach life with the concept of extreme ownership, um, it, it really does allow you to take your challenges, take your successes, and take your failures and grow with them. So who's proud of something they own, right? Like, yeah, right? Like when you own something, you're like, hey, I have this. Whether it's a tangible thing or whether it's a personality trait, you're usually proud of what you own. Uh, mistakes and failures, we tend to be a little more shameful of or embarrassed about, and so we tend to hide them or not pay attention to them or not put them front of mind. Whereas the things that we are proud of, they're front of mind and we, tend to live by that and, and, and expose that area to other people. And so when you own failures, you own mistakes, or you own things like maybe a sale didn't go great, but you own it, like, well, I could have done better here. You don't make that mistake again the next time, okay? So it's a concept that doesn't come, I think, naturally, because in life, we're taught from a young age, like, oh, well, when you mess up, like, you don't wanna share that with people. No, you want to share your successes, um, but but sharing your failures and putting them front of mind for you can really really help you move forward and use them as growing points. Okay, um, we tend to with failures use our emotional brain, um, whereas that's not going to help us. Right? Use that logical brain. Let that logical brain evaluate the situation and help you move forward in creating 
uh, a mindset to not make the same mistake again. Um, and when you own a failure, um, something that we'll talk about in a little bit is your thoughts create this whole circle that leads to your actions and that leads to your outcomes. So when you own a failure, um, you own the correction and then you own the progress and you own that forward momentum. Um, this little circle is super, super powerful when you look at thoughts being at the top because thoughts, they're not, they, they don't exist in real life, right? Nobody else hears them for the most part unless you say them out loud, but our thoughts are so powerful and unfortunately, majority tend to go negative, right? Our self-talk often is a negative self-talk and so if those are our thoughts, then, then they create these stories, which, you know, in a situation, have you ever had a text conversation with someone and you just totally misinterpreted what they were saying? <laughs> yeah, it's super easy to do. And so you've created this story because of your thoughts, because of your misinterpretation that doesn't actually exist. So when we talk about our thoughts and we talk about extreme ownership, it is a everyday uh, process to create the new habit of having positive ones, okay? Um, we have girls, three girls to be exact. Um, so you can imagine they're 11, 13, and 25. Um, the, the challenges with emotions and hormones and, and what you hear come in from their brain, you're like, wow, where did that go? But when you have the skills and the ability to make sure that your thoughts are positive, life just follows suit. And so when your stories then become positive, your beliefs are positive, your actions are then positive, and the results. And then it's just this cycle of positivity versus negativity. Um, so while this is very profound and simple, it's not that easy, mm -hmm. right? Because those negative thoughts tend to be the first and the most powerful in our head. And it's a lifetime of changing those. Um, so if you want to talk a little yeah, bit about so <laughs> Making sure that we're creating our environment goes back to that, right? That our environment is around positive people. So I'm a big book reader, so audiobooks in the car, that kind of thing. So again, what comes into my brain is what's going to come out of my mouth, right? And we have to be very responsible for how we speak to our children, how do we speak to the people around us, right? Because that that little, and you guys all probably have this, right? You're eight years old, you're nine years old, you're 10 years old, some teacher said something to you, right? And you believed it because this person said it. And so now you're listening even as an adult to that eight-year-old self, right? And this is your life, this is your environment because you still believe this story, right? So we need to slowly, this is gonna take process, but, it, but it's day over day, little moment over little moment when you notice those negative thoughts, we have to do our best to kind of cut them off, right? Stop it and okay, what's the worst case scenario? Probably not gonna happen, what's the most common, right? Like she said, we were emergency room physician assistants previously in big cities and in medicine, we always go through what's the killer, the common, and the zebra. Meaning the killer is, uh, this. I have to make sure I pay attention to this because this could kill them, right? What's the most likely scenario? And then what's the zebra? The, the story in medicine about zebra is if you hear hoof prints coming up behind you, right? It's probably a horse, not a zebra. But if you turn around and there's a zebra, you're like, oh, that one caught me off guard, <laughs> right? So, so we have to be conscious of, okay, what are my most common scenario is going to play out in this thing right and so when we have these thoughts right and i was sharing this this little story this morning you know of course TikTok, right so this olympic athlete pretty butch girl comes up she's setting her tray down next to her friend she's like hey some guy talked to me right um he told me move you're holding up the line so i wonder what color our wedding colors are going to be <laughs> right so she created this whole story in her head off of that one moment of nonsensical little thought, right? And so we tend to do that. So we have to be very careful with what we're thinking. And when it starts to veer negative, like, hey, correct it, push it back a little bit the other way. And what's the most common, most likely story? Because then that creates our beliefs. That creates our actions that we're gonna take on those beliefs. And then our results are gonna come from that, right? And that's gonna be our environment. So if we're constantly paying attention to that, our environment's gonna be one that we're gonna enjoy, right? So. Failure versus confidence, okay? So this little dude up in the corner, my actual first job, uh, I was 13 um, to through, through middle school and high school, was actually a telemarketer for my dad's company. 
right? So I understand selling and things like that from when I was little, but I, I remember this one in particular, uh, pre-puberty, I'm five foot tall, 83 pounds, calling everybody, cold calling from the telephone book. So imagine, right? And it wasn't anything great, right? It wasn't like what you guys do. You guys are helping people, right? So it was line by line. <laughs> so, so I remember though, these, some old woman's like, no thank you, ma'am. And I'm like, I'm a boy. <laughs> so, so we have to understand right? well, our identity, okay? So, so when we talk about it's these failure and confidence, how do we balance these two things? Because we're going to fail. It's just part of the game, right? And we have to have confidence to go through all these things. So we have to, I am are two of the most powerful words we can use, right? If we, if we hear our kids say, ah, I am bad at this, or I am not this, or I am stupid, all right? We can't allow that kind of language, right? So to us in our house, those are curse words, right? If it's an I am negative, not, it's a curse word, right? So we, what am I? I am. And so we, we, we also now run a martial arts school, a jiu-jitsu school. And uh, so we have our kids when they're first starting and trying, they're like, I am strong. I am confident, right? And then at the beginning, they're very like, I am not. Because we told them to do it. But by the 20 minutes in, they've done all this stuff. They beat each other up. They're like, I'm strong. I'm confident. They're, they're there, right? So we have to make sure that who we identify as, okay, is the I am. But there's always this little voice syndrome, this LVS we call it, this little voice in our head. Ah, uh, what if I can? I don't know. Uh, you know, it's just one cookie. Uh, it's just, uh, I've already done enough, right? I don't need to do that extra call. I, I, I'm okay, right? So that little voice, that's our little demon, right? That we need to like flick off our shoulder, right? Literally and figuratively, but we need to <laughs> get rid of that thing and say, no, and I actually have a tattoo here because I, I fought a long time and I realized over time it wasn't the person that I was fighting right it was my demons in my head and like that's why I did it to overcome and let my brain know I'm the one in charge right not like my emotions not my it's that little voice he's not in charge right so this is where the power of yet comes in so we have to understand because our little voice is there and we have imposter syndrome right we're like oh, I'm not quite good I'm not good at this I'm oh, I'm right so we have to say okay well I'm not good at this yet Right? Anybody really good at remembering names or anybody not good at remembering names? Yes. Yes. Exactly what we're getting at. Right? And it's because you haven't practiced it. Right? So we practice however it takes. Whatever you're not good at is yet. Just add yet to whatever it is. Okay? Because if you do put in the time and if you score yourself low on one of these things, you're like, I'm, I'm not there yet. Right? I can get there. And so what does that take? It takes practice, obviously. Right? So we, because we have to practice enough to stack proof for ourselves. We have to stack this proof that I've done this countless times and I know the barriers. I've, I've heard no enough times to know, okay, don't go down that way, right? No this way, okay, don't go that way, right? So now I have kind of set my parameters of where I should go, right, to get the sale or to get the thing done or to get whatever I'm looking to get done, right? I have to stack proof for myself so my little voice shuts up, okay? So how do we get through all that is grit. Now, uh, Angela Duckworth talks about she, uh, a professor from Stanford has this great book, great TED talk about grit being the most important thing in our children, right? When it comes to how successful they will be in life, right? It's not like where they grew up, who their parents are, how much money they have. None of that matters. It's how gritty is that kid, right? If, you're, if you have grit and you can withstand pain and trouble and <coughs> turmoil and all that little voice trying to overcome and you're just gritty about it, you're gonna to get to the thing you're trying to do. So this is where we're gonna balance our, our failure and our confidence. Now, this is a picture of me at one of my biggest failing points in life, right? I'm in second place. This was the 2000 Olympic trials, right? So this guy on top goes to the Olympics, takes gold, and I don't, okay? So I did get a chance to represent the US and I went and competed at World Cup and Pan Am and all these other things and, and fantastic. But in Olympic hopefuls, our quarters are years, right? Because it's every four years. So you're like four more years. And so you gotta get back to get back to grind, right? So 2004, same thing happened, same guy. So at that point I had to shift, right? Now, in a fixed mindset, you react, you get emotional, and of course you you have to give yourself that five minute pity party if things don't go your way. Right? And people in your own life probably have had things where they spend way too much time just crying over whatever they have, 
right? We need to make sure that we, like she said, get into our logical brain and stay as far away from that emotional brain or letting that emotional kind of thing take over because we wanna make sure, okay, what action can I take? How can I respond to this versus react to this, right? And how the difference between respond and react is that little time between the impetus of the thing that happened and our actions that we take afterwards, right? So there's this little window of how am I gonna react or respond to this thing that happened to me? Okay, so for me it was, all right, well the first time I'm gonna just train harder, I'm gonna go back and year over year I made team and I did some great things, but then 2004 happened and I lost again. And so then I shifted and I'm like, all right, well I'm gonna do MMA, right? Because that was the thing, two of us get locked in a cage, there's no politics, right? Like somebody's, only one gets to walk out kind of thing. So my dad has this, this uh, and I quoted him as dad, uh, saying as a kid that I always grew up just implanted in my head and it says reach for the stars because even if you fail you're gonna end up on top of the mountain whereas most people are reaching for the mountaintop and they fail they end up in the valley so set your goals stupid high now we have to have the confidence in ourselves that I can reach that goal because otherwise you're like yeah I want to be XYZ but we don't believe in ourselves enough to like actually chase that thing right so we have to set those goals but we have to believe that we can go get those things right so this is what, if you guys may have heard this, uh, big, hairy, audacious goals, or the big BHAGs, right? You guys heard that before? Yes. So we set these big, hairy, audacious goals, right? And then we chase them, right? And maybe it's a five-year, 10-year goal. Like, you know, I just got used to like, okay, four years for this, 10 years for a jiu-jitsu black belt. Like, it just, right? Med school, it's, it's a long track. So I set these high goals, and then I go get them, right? And then I get there, and I'm at the top, and I'm like, well, now what do I do, right? Now I got to find a new goal. So... The, there's a great book, 10X versus 2X, right? And sometimes that takes a complete shift. You're like, all right, well, how do I get better at this thing? But if we're trying to 10X something versus just get a little bit better, right? We have to completely shift our mindset. Like, what do I have to do to get to a 10X point, right? Do you have anything? Yeah. So we need to, it, it's not the same framework in our mind to go 10X versus 2X, right? If we're gonna double what we're trying to do versus explode in, in productivity. Now, even Olympic athletes, we have coaches, mentors. So if, if you look at anybody that's super successful in anything they're doing, somebody helped pave the way for them. They, they followed a proven path, right? They're, we all like think we're independent, we're hacking our way through, trying to figure out life, and right? We're tripping all over everything. So if we can find the people in the room that like, how can I, who's doing the best? What is he doing or she doing? What, how can I copy that, right? And then don't be afraid to ask for help. Like, hey, I'm having trouble with this. How do I do this, right? You've done it. How did you do it? I would love to do that thing, right? So having a coach or a mentor, it's, it's not an, an ego crush. It's really gonna help you level up. So make sure you find somebody in whatever you're trying to do that you can look up to. Now, this eight-year-old and 80-year-old self, for me, these are the two people that I try to make proud right? Because I don't care what anybody else thinks. Is my eight-year-old self and my 80-year-old self. If I'm eight and I'm looking at my life now, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. Like, you got this and this and you've done this and this. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, good for you, right? And 80, looking back, am I designing my life in a way that my 80-year-old self would be proud, right? Am I treating people the right way? Am I chasing my goals? Am I living to my potential? Am I satisfied with a, with a five on my relationship with others? Right? Am I satisfied with my fitness and health goals? Right? What would my 80 year old self? Could I have done more? Could I have done better? Right? So these are the two people I'm always trying to like make proud is myself in those two extremes of age, if you would. Right? Um, this is about life, ha life happens for us, not to us. Meaning that we have to kind of gauge when things don't go our way, it's really just a detour. We're going to learn because who we become in the process is really the important part, right? Now, you'll see at the beginning here, um, when I was in high school, I joined the Navy thinking, oh, I'm gonna be a Navy SEAL, right? And I get in because leaving my house as a, as a high school kid, my dad said military or, or college, right? And I'm like, well, I suck at school, so I'm going to the military. <laughs> and you know, I only knew how to fight, so I thought, okay, I'll be a SEAL, right? And I remember being at the, at the office and they're like, well, you can't just be a SEAL, you have to choose a job. 
right? And I'm like, yeah, SEAL. SEAL would be my job, <laughs> right? They're like, no, it doesn't work like that. Like, <laughs> right? So, so eventually, like, this is ultimately how I even got into medicine, because they're like, well, your scores qualify you for these things. I'm like, okay, I'll just do that, whatever that is, right? And then as soon as I joined, I was like, shit, I should have went to school, <laughs> right? <laughs> So it didn't work out. And then I told you already, the Olympic thing didn't work out. And then so I left and I was like, okay, I'll be in the UFC and I'm gonna go do MMA. And so I had a couple MMA fights and by that time I'm 30, 35. And my body just wasn't keeping up with training twice a day that hard and doing all that. And so it started, you know, I'd put some miles on it up to that point, right? And uh, so I did get a couple chances to, to compete in, in MMA, but never made to the UFC. But you see all those things led me and it, life happens for you. And I'd like to share this quick little uh, parable, if you would. There's this farmer who one day his horse runs off, okay? And the neighbor comes over and says, oh, you're so unlucky. That's so terrible for you. And he's like, maybe. The next couple days later, the horse comes back with two other wild horses, right? And the neighbor comes back and says, oh, you're so lucky, right? You, you got these new horses. Oh, maybe, right? So then, day later, this guy's son is on one of those wild horses trying to tame it and gets thrown and breaks his leg, okay? Neighbor comes over, oh, you're so unlucky. Oh, this happens, right? He's like, maybe. The next day, the military comes and says, oh, all eligible age males. Oh, the son has a broken leg. He can't go to the military, okay? Oh, neighbor, oh, you're so lucky, right? So ultimately, life is happening for us, not to us, right? So we can interpret it, like we said at the beginning, however we want in these kind of cases. So for me, it ends up like I'm setting these stupid high goals and I'm chasing them down, but who I become in the process is really what I'm after. So then, you know, I decide, okay, I'm gonna go to med school. And uh, then I have a little girl, right? And, and back then when I was make, placing second at, at this trials, I was already in grad school. I had a kid already, right? Like I was trying to live three lives at once and be the best at all of them. Um, and so I ended up going to PA school because it was faster, right? I'm like, I have a daughter, like I'll go to PA school. But I tell you what, that led me to then become a professor at a couple universities to then led me to my woman in the red dress, right? Because with all that confidence, I wasn't afraid to ask the prettiest girl in the room out, right? I'm like, what if she says no? Oh, guess my second favorite answer. <laughs> oh, <that's> awesome. <laughs> Right. So, so then I'm like, okay, well, it led me then to jujitsu black belt, and I wanted to be financially free by 50, right? And I wanted to be a leader of of a group of team and like share all the things I've learned. And so I was able to notice here I failed a lot more, but I was able to learn and grow and become all those things and chase those big goals and actually hit a lot of them as I as I got there. So, guys, when you're failing and you're, it's not happening in the way you think it should happen, right? It's for you for a reason. What lesson, stop and look around, what can I learn from this that's happening to me? It's not happening to you, it's happening for you, for a reason, right? Because you're gonna grow from that thing, okay? So this little bit here, you know, I spent a lot of time in competition with others, and then later realized like, no, the competition is with me, right? It's, I'm not chasing something against my teammate here. And just like in this room, and I love that little quote in the back, I feel like all we're doing is just reading off your signs. <laughs> right? And so it's about collaborating. And you guys are not competing with each other, right? Even though you're like, okay, I have this and he has that, and, right? You're competing with the you, right? With yourself. And, and Krista likes to call it your yester you, right? So we have this thing in martial arts called Kaizen, and it's that 1% daily improvement, okay? So just a little bit, if I can improve just 1%, by the end of a year, it's 37 times better, right? It's not just, okay, it's 1% times, it's 37X better. So just looking for those little things. So in this room also for you guys, right? You don't win unless you all win, right? So same thing goes for us. We need to make sure that rising tides lifting all boats, right? That, that we lift others as we climb. If you're doing well and you see somebody struggling, help them up. If, if yes. you know something, they, aren't quite getting right in a respectful way like I would love to help you that kind of thing right so we need to make sure that we're helping other people and you guys do this every day with your job and Zig Ziglar has a great way of saying he says you can get everything in life that you want if you just help enough other people get what they want right so you get all of these sales that's helping them help you get what you want does that make sense all right so lastly we need to finish with gratitude okay so 
we need to be grateful. We tend to, to, as humans, get on this hedonic treadmill or hedonic adaptation, which means that we just, we reach a level and then we get used to it. And then we chase another, we get it to a level and we get used to it, right? It becomes our normal. So I want you to back up a little bit. And when you were 19, look at the house you live in, the spouse you may have, the relationships you have. If, like that was, you're living your goal from back then probably, right? So, so we have to keep this front of mind. All of these little things from our life score, we need to make sure that we are doing our very best and then stopping to like look around and say, hey, I'm really grateful for you. I'm really grateful for you guys, right? So we're gonna finish with that. Um, we wanna thank you for allowing us to come and share this stuff with you guys today. Oh, awesome. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any questions guys any like takeaways any kind of like aha things that you may have had for yourself especially with these life scores that you're like hey this is this is where because I don't want this to just be a hey we talk and then you go and you're back to your regular self right if you can try and grab something grab one thing for yourself to like leave the room with and you're like you know what I'm gonna work on this thing I'm gonna actually get better at this whatever even if it's gratitude I'm gonna get better at like in the car like I'm thankful for this car, right? I'm thankful for the weather. I'm th I'm grateful for all these things. So if you guys have any shares, we'd love to hear them. Yeah? I got a question, I guess. Sir? We do that in our house a lot. We're in our PMA, positive mental attitude. Love it. So how do you teach that to your kids? Like we, we, what we say it a lot. Yeah. Now, we try to live it and yeah. lead by example, but how do you teach that? Talk about it. Make that the dinner table conversation. And then you think, oh my gosh, they're not hearing it. They're not hearing it. They're not listening. And then you'll hear them talk about it to their friends. And you're like, oh, it is hitting home. They are hit understanding. They are listening. And what I've started to do, our girls are a little bit older now, is if I'm facing my own challenge or struggle, I'll talk them through where I'm at in my headspace mm -hmm. and what I'm thinking and my possibilities and my emotions so that they can understand, oh, she's, mom's struggling with it too, but she is trying to make the best of it because they don't get to hear what we say in our head. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I think if you're talking about it, that's the way to go, yeah. right? Because like I said about us being eight, nine, 10 years old and somebody said something negative, oh, that person's not gonna be good at math or good, oh, they're, they're not, they don't have any art skills or whatever your thing is, right? So we grab onto that. So if we're a kid and all they ever hear is this kind of language, right? Because that's how we talk. That's how they're gonna talk. Now. After 13, they start becoming influenced more and more by their friends, right? Their friend group becomes their language patterns. So we were kind of worried because of our 25-year-old when she hit that like 14, 15, 16 and started to kind of rebel. And, but then we'd see her with her friends and she'd repeat the stuff that we would say, right? And now at 25, she's like, she's in dental school now, got her stuff together, doing great things, crushing it. Um, and we homeschool and we put them in martial arts. And we homeschool and put them in martial arts, right? So we surround their environment with the people and the things that we want, right? Right. Yeah, that's, that's probably so a little cheating. cheating. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. I like the eight-year-old versus the 80-year-old because, yeah. like, you know, your goals early in life are so much different than as you age and progress, even from, like, five years ago, like, the things that are important to me have changed so much. Yep. So being able to look at it both perspective of what tools coming up, but also can you be proud of the way you handled it at the end when it's all said and done? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. I like the whole uh, life is happening for us, not to us thing. Mm. I've had a lot of stuff like personal life, work life, everything this month alone. Just like man, somebody just beat me down. Yeah. Since yep. taking a toll. But like, I also love to believe there's a silver lining in all things, man. So like, just that it's happening for us, you can take that as what you want it to be and turn it into what you want it to be rather than this is just a bad all the time. Like, you yeah. have to turn it around. That so way, so. so I, use, I use this, like, you know, I would not wish my childhood on any other little kid, right? Um, but now that I'm older, I'm like, I'm so grateful for that, right? Because I learned so much from that <clears throat> nonsense, right? And I would never parent the way that happened, right? But at the same time, like all those struggles, right? At, at a certain age, we go through divorce and bankruptcy and things that we just think the world is ending, right? And then afterwards, you're like those, you know, people trying to call you to like say, oh, your credit score is gonna be, you're like, 
who cares? <laughs> Whatever, bro. Like I've been there, done that. Right. So once we, when we're going through it, it's it sucks. But after we realize later, like oh, like I've I've recognized just like all you guys with your sales and stuff, right? Like all those no's, all the the failures and stuff. This is the pattern that we now recognize to avoid, right? <clears throat> so good, good. That's awesome to hear. Anybody else from today? Yeah, man. Uh, just keeping it, like that's kind of my, been on this road just since yesterday. My wife's best friend, her husband uh, just had a biopsy and it, her friend got the email and found out it was cancer and probably not gonna make it, right? And my wife and I were talking about that yesterday and just the gratitude of like, how much time do we waste being in the wrong mindset, right? Yeah. And like, so this was perfect to come in here and hear today. Um, and so uh, thank you guys. But you know, the other thing I told my wife is like, if it was ever that, and you found out and I didn't know, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't even know. You know, because I don't want, you know, the, the life's, if it's not long, if I'm not long for this, I want to spend as much time thinking about it. Yeah. So, so yeah. Thank you. That's guys. beautiful. That's, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. So I'm sorry you have to go through that with your friends that's, too. But, but yeah, it, those those moments do happen for us, right? We're like, all right, you know what? Maybe now I'll, those little, I'm going to start setting dates for my wife, right. right? And date my wife, right? And so that if it does come, right? Now you're, 80 year old self is even more grateful yep. for that. Cherish those moments for sure. Yeah. I would like a big stream ownership. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think also, I think there's a privilege in like taking ownership for the things you mess up because it does feel like life happens to you sometimes. And like, you can't own that. You kind of just have to go with it yeah. and roll with it. And sometimes, like, I, I made, recently made a stupid mistake and I spent all this time beating myself up. And then once I was just like, yeah, I just really fucked that up. <laughs> and that's it. And I have to move on. And it's kind of a privilege to like be able to make those mistakes. Absolutely. You know, that I can control that. I can move on from it. Yeah. Yes. The, you, we, we, you know, I, I forget the Zen saying, but right, if it's something you can control, you shouldn't worry about it. If it's something you can't control, you shouldn't worry about it. Right? <laughs> because you can only control what you can control. And so what you can't control, take ownership of everything possible so that you can shift and change and make adaptions as you need. So that's awesome. All right. Well, guys, appreciate all of you. So, I know we only got a couple, I, I would love to hear a little bit more from the room on what they took away from that because one of the things that I really, that hit me, and one more round of applause. One of the things that I really loved is the I am. I hear my kids say those types of things a lot. I am this, I am that. And it breaks my heart when I hear something negative. I love it when I hear I am and it's something positive, but how many times do we step in and say, whoa, we don't need that around here. How often do you do that if you're talking with a friend or a mentor or a colleague and it's I am or you are and it's something negative? How often do we stop, whoa, 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 you shouldn't talk that way about yourself. Are we brave enough to have that conversation with our colleague, with our friend, with our family member? Hey, the negative self-talk isn't helping you. <clears throat> so that was a big one for me. That one, that one really helped me. The little voice syndrome, right? I think the little, the, the LVS is something that all of us salespeople struggle with. I know I do, right? The little guy in that head says some really messed up things to us sometimes, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Asshole. <laughs> At least the guy in my head can be. And so what are you doing to protect it, right? What are we doing to do the things that these guys are talking about on your daily sheet to protect you from the little voice in your head? I love the power of yet, right? I read a great book by John Maxwell. He talks about all about failing forward, that your failures are not something that define you. You feel forward, that our failures are opportunities, right? We don't live... What is it? We live and learn. We don't win and lose. We win and learn. Right? And that's what I gained from you guys today. So thank you so very much. Angela Duckworth is the one who talked about grit. Duckworth? Okay. I'll have to check, look her up. Thank you for that. Any other big takeaways or things that hit you, please? That was fantastic. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, two things. Um, one, I love how you, I mean, I mean, there's a certain level of trust, right? That if you know you're doing the right thing, 
no matter what happens to you, you're, you're moving in the right direction, right? But keeping everything in alignment um, with that belief allows you to learn and not fail, right? Allows you to have that certain level of trust that you are going to push through, to make it, to, to strive for something. And having something to strive for is really important. Yeah. And I think that little voice sticks up a lot when we don't have a goal in mind, when we don't have something bigger than us to, to go for. So landing on the mountain is, is fantastic. Um, and then it just, I mean, so many freaking takeaways. I guess three things. One, my, I deal with my son a lot, who's, who's six years old. And gosh, my girls, who I want is 12, so I, good Lord, he'll ask for you guys' advice later. But uh, on that stuff, but he always- Apparently he's jujitsu. Yeah. Everything is so, is so direct, like it, it's so finite, right? If he doesn't do, if he can't catch the baseball, that's it. Like, if, dude, I've thrown, this is the second time I've thrown it to you. Like, calm down. But it, it always makes me think, like, okay, I have to be patient as a father. How can I teach him this? And then it's self-reflection of how much are we doing that in our own lives to say, I can't do this. This is over. Gosh, this is hard. So it's your kids teach you a lot. So I took that from you guys, which I, I really, really value. Um, but then also just a question, like, what's your what's your goals? Like, you guys write them down. What's what's up next? Like, <laughs> What's what's the next mountaintop for you? Um, I just Start. want to touch on the mindset for a moment. Um, Carol Dweck does amazing things about mindset, um, and what I would encourage you with some investment stuff that we're working on. Yeah, so we're launching all those things now. Yeah. Congratulations, that's awesome. Anyone else, any final thoughts? Anybody on Zoom have any final thoughts or, or takeaways? I wanna make sure we don't forget you guys. Yeah, I'll just say that was, uh, thank you so much. That was really powerful for me to hear. I'm, I'm going through a little stint where I'm not working right now and uh, it's really, really difficult for me because I'm kind of uh, a person who just needs to work to find fulfillment in life. So um, thinking about the things that I can control right now, the ways that I can get better. I heard so many different snippets of different books that I love, uh, you know, Happiness Advantage, 10X, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I heard all of those different, uh, you know, uh, Atomic Habits. I heard all of that coming in and just realizing, you know, those are things that I can do right now. I can revisit those things right now and spend time focusing on, um, on getting better so that when I can return to work, that I can be my best self. Great so stuff. I want to thank you for that. Thank you, Ben. To give you a, a, he was just in a very serious rollover accident and is out of work, like very serious accident. So we're lucky to have Ben mm -hmm. and Ben has helped us with gratitude. gratitude. Ben has helped us a lot with gratitude on the, over the last few weeks because his ordeal has inspired a lot of us to relook at our lives and make sure that we're making the correct deposits, making sure that we're spending time with the appropriate people and that we're having gratitude for all the things that we have in our life. 
because in a matter of seconds it could have been taken from Ben and it was a really big wake up call for me personally and I know that it touched a lot of other people in the room as well so great to hear from you Ben thank you for that anybody else please Josh go ahead I think sometimes you're afraid to fail because it's like I've made it here Right, I mean, we're in a we're in a situation where not many people have this opportunity, and then um, you don't want to fail because where am I going to go from here? Like back down to the bottom, but like when you hear this and it's like, oh, okay, you failed, at, you know, to get to the Olympics, so you decided to be a PA, <laughs> like what? You know, I, oh. You know what you failed or didn't want to do that anymore so now you just run a 400 member like what like a lot of we people need, that's we need like, to fail like this guy yeah, that's, like, that's, like, that's like one life goal you know this is like seven or yeah. whatever i was trying to keep up with so totally but apparently they don't hold on and squeeze you know that like i have this i have to hold you know it's just like okay well i'll just do something else to the yeah top level yeah it's awesome it's inspiring thank yeah. you sarah did you have something i did the 10x part just made me think of the one party guy out of kansas like it was a completely different mindset and training from what we've trained for almost a decade to have someone come in and 10x that close rate on these appointments only happened not because he worked harder or smarter but because he completely switched the approach completely switched the belief and now those metrics are what they are so yeah. it's like i don't want 2x that's cool but like I, i'd rather take a new mindset on it and believe on and 10x it so that that spoke to me great stuff anyone so else first said something once like if you have a goal and you have a time frame for that goal okay cut your time in half and double that goal wow <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. That's how you fail faster, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Half time, double the goal. That, that's another bit, and I'm going to go to you, Jeff. That was another one that was big for me because we always talk about your goals, right? Smart goals. This goal should be attainable. You're saying, screw attainable. Yes, it should be attainable. It, it, it is attainable. Make it as big as you possibly can. Your mindset is what's in your way for it to be attainable. That's huge. That's huge. Go ahead, Jeff. I always do the best when I take action. So this list comes around this morning, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, damn, I just scheduled some things with my friends. I just scheduled a date with my wife. Like, yeah. And then I look at these other things, and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, <laughs> 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 good thing there's a list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the 1% group is such a big deal, because that's, yeah, you, that's yeah. overwhelming. I thought I was kicking ass. And then you look at the list, and you're like, Maybe I can do better. So, we do this particular list about twice a year, and we do it with our team at least once a year. Um, and every single time, we're, we're just trying to calibrate, right? Like, oh, a little bit better here. Oh, this one kind of took a hit because I'm spending so much time on this one, right? Not enough time on that one. And so just keeping awareness and, and again, front of mind type stuff. Yeah, be in action. That's my takeaway. Take action. Yeah. Get a couple of things on that list and make it just a smooth better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. I love the 1% too, right? 1% daily adds up a lot. Go ahead. So the I've heard, read many books about thoughts controlling action, but I liked that you boiled it down with two more steps between the thoughts and the actions, which was the stories that resonated with me. Because right now I'm really hyper-focused on communicating through story. Um, and so that made sense that I was telling myself stories. Yeah. So then I thought of my 80 year old me. And I've got some areas, some shame, where if I look right now and I don't correct it, I'm not gonna be happy with what I made. And they're relationship based. I have a sister. I don't talk to this. I can fix it, whether she wants to or not. There you go. But at least you put the effort, right? Like, that's it. You did your part, you did what you could control, you take extreme ownership of your side of the situation when it comes to relationships, right? But it's that, it's that LBS of, ah, I'm good enough. Like, I've tried yeah, yeah, a thousand yeah, times. Yeah. She's unwilling. It's a one way street, it needs to be two way. And I'm telling myself that story, which is creating my belief that is not fixable. Yeah, if I could add one little part to that, actually. So, 
So I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is our logo for a martial arts school. And uh, it was we, we created it because in jiu-jitsu, everybody has a nickname. And I was on the US team for all these things and ended up going from New York City to Miami. And so I was the only white dude in there. And right, I wear Team USA and everything. So that my nickname became Captain America. <laughs> and uh, but then when it came time to design the logo, I can't use Captain America or Avengers and stuff. So we edited it down a bit, and this kind of goes into this. Um, the five pointed star really represents who we spend the most time with, because there's that thing of the five people you spend the most time with are who you are, right? Show me your friends, I'll show you who you are. So those five people, I have to be very particular about who those are, right? The blue circle are the positive people that you send you good books, good video, good, right? The, the, the more than five, but good friends, good people, right? They have positive influence in your life. The white, right, are the essentially people that come and go in our life, right? They're, they're not super positive. Not, they, we have to interact with a lot of people as we go, right? So they're a white circle. And then family or friends included, there's the red circle. And these are toxic, you know, energy vampire type people, right? So I do have family members that are in that red circle. That I'm just like, hey, I did the things, I did my side, my whole extreme ownership, I, I went down that path, and every single, you're just not ready yet to be in my world, and it's okay, right? So at some point, sometimes, we have to be okay with that too. Mm -hmm. Here, here. Good stuff. I love that, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> Guys, I hope that this added value to your day, to your week, to your month. We got a whole week left in the month, and a whole lot of month left months left in the year. Mm -hmm. Let's refocus, let's re-energize, let's take what we've learned and go and do likewise. Thank you very much for today, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Huh? Oh yeah, hey, forgot, we're doing, today's the backpack drive. Stack the chairs, stick around for the backpack drive. Stack the chairs. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.